disenfranchised or disinherited of all that should go to them. I feel we need to look into this issue of widows and their children. See how we can support them. This is the What about child? Or warm me. So at the jati. Oh garadie. So and draw fear on the law. In as much as widows are a segment of the population of Nigeria, their human rights should not be trampled upon or denied. The need for Nigerians widow database is of utmost importance. We to repair Padano and if you want to padano if you are my I need not to share or you don't can share to share Lori and Way Lab. I support the widow protection bill. I urge the National Assembly to pass this bill into law to save widows from some families where ox are there waiting to grab all the properties of the diseased. I am wishing every widow happy International Widows Day. I am using this opportunity to say to you that you can surmount challenges. I am also using the opportunity to say to you, you can do more. And to say to non-widows, don't wait until tragedy occurs before you make move to safeguard what belongs to you. It is now time for us to take collective action to ensure that widows' rights are protected all the time. has a right to her properties after the death of her husband. A child has a right to her father's properties after the death of her father. I stand against widowhood right. Government should come in to make more serious laws that will protect the widows, more serious laws that will help them not in disenfranchise or disinherited of all that should go to them. I feel we need to look into this issue of widows and their children. See how we can support them. I'm a man who is in as much as widows are a segment of the population of Nigeria, their human rights should not be trampled upon. For today, together with um, Onye Okocha, who will be joining us in a second, um, I welcome you to today's meeting. It's going to be interactive, it's going to be um, very engaging, and we have quite a number of speakers you know, um, to engage us today. Um, I would like us to have the following um, ground rules as we go on. Um, of course, being a webinar, all our uh, microphones will be muted, and um, we would start, you know. Um, immediately every you know we would start immediately you know every speaker is given five minutes would speak for five minutes and at the end of your five minutes or microphone will be switched up so that we can accommodate as many speakers as possible um we intend to um go through our program um in time and you know uh, i'm sure that um, we will all have a lovely time today um those are the grounds so i welcome you once again to the international women's day 2020 now i'll just give you a, a brief background of um the international women's day as we await our speakers um the united nations observes 23rd um, june of every year as international widows day to draw attention to the voices and experiences of widows and to galvanize the unique support that they need. We all know that widows are a vulnerable part of our, of our society 
and um, we need to have their voices known. This year's um, um, edition is going to talk about the um, launch of the public of the database and that is very important because until you have um, the people and you know how many people you're going to um, plan for, you really can't plan adequately for them. So um, we're going to go straight into our program, you know, and um, we will um, start with the national anthem and that I'll, I'll, be, I'll be taking that now. So, um, want to go. Arise, oh compatriots, Nigeria's call obey, to serve our fatherland, with love and strength and faith. The labor of a hero's past shall never be in vain. To serve with heart and mind a nation bound in freedom, peace and unity. Thank you. I'm joined now by my co-moderator, Oyinye Okocha. I must say that both of us are widows, so we know firsthand the, um, the issues that com confront widows in our nation. We, are, um, we, are, we, we both know and we understand you know, why there must be a change in the way widows are treated in the society and there must be a, a, a focus on widows and their children because they're the most vulnerable part of our society. Without much ado, we'll go straight into the program, you know, and we'll be having a, a, a talk by Mrs. Hope Alma, Ms. Hope Nwakesi, who is the founder of the Almana Oak Foundation, and she's a widow for the past 24 years. She um, has been the one behind the first to create a database in conjunction with the Ministry of Women Affairs mm -hmm. and WFM 91.7. And so we'll um, take our opening remarks. Ms. Oak, please come online. Thank you. Thank you, Tara. Can you hear me? Tara, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yes. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here this morning. And uh, I'm going to make this small speech. And uh, Her Excellency, Dr. Aisha Mohammed Buhari, the First Lady, Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Honorable Minister of Women Affairs, Social Development, then Pauline Talent, the UN country representative to Nigeria and ECOWAS, Comfort Lampton, the Honorable House Member, Honorable Taiwo Oluga Chair, House Committee on Women Affairs, our special guest speakers, the Commissioners of Women Affairs, the media personalities, the gender advocates, and all stakeholders, ladies and gentlemen present, we welcome you all for today's program. As we all know, today is International Day, and like Sarah said, it has been a day marked for by UN to address the plight of widows in the, Nigeria. And today we are gathered here to start a pace of something that is very important. And we are not going to make today. I said I was going to make much speech today because it's not a speech like I keep saying when it comes to issues of widowhood. We all know it either by direct experience or by indirect experience, by literature or stories or by hearsay and rumors. But I must say to each and every one of us today that irrespective of which way you hear it, that it is very likely that you have not had the real story or you may have had the, the, the real story. But the truth is that when it comes to widowhood, that 
the issues that happens in widowhood, you know, like how I always say, widowhood remains the most hidden and fair area of violation of human rights. And then because of what we went through this year, we have tagged ta our team building widows agenda in the face of in the face of new things that happens based based on the COVID. And and I, you know, like I said, I'm not going to talk more things about discussion theories. But I would I, let me not not de deny myself the opportunity of telling briefly how this affects me. Like Tara said, I wasn't widowed 24 years ago, I was widowed 26 years ago. And uh, the truth is this, you know, I remember 26 years ago, one month coming back from Beria, I got to my place of, I got to my place of abode, I, I'm a police wife, I received ejection letter, one month. Fast forward, three months after, I got to my place of work, I work with the police school at the same time, and I received rejection letter, and I and I saw people standing on the notice board, walking down there to see what was going on. Pasted on that notice board is my suspension letter. So under three months, I had no house, I had no job, and I had three children ages eight to three. The stories are, are massive, but that is not part of. But the reality is this: I am saying this not because I'm, but I'm just showing you. This is really the various things that are hidden inside the journey that most widows have to go through. And I have to say to us today, as we gather here today, there's a grieving woman somewhere in Plateau who just lost her spouse and breadwinner to the cold hands of death and is being denied of her rights. A widow somewhere in Delta State is being made to undergo some repressive cultural practice, including shaving her pubic hair, which, is, which she is taking in order to prove that people's assumption that she did not kill the husband. So, you know, this is part of the reason we have to. Somewhere and in another place, someone is going through some, something. As a one woman is being denied of her right or made to compromise by a relationship with a, a, a relative in order to maintain her right so that she will not be kicked out. These are part of the things we are, we are, we are looking on today. And uh, I, I, as, I, I, as I'm saying this, I want us today, we are going to launch the Widows Database. And this Widows Database came up as a result of what we saw. I remember, you know, during the, the COVID problem, you know, people, widows started calling me up and down, and I had to call my dear partner to, who I said, please, this is what is going on. And we started a palliative, CAC palliative in the process. That is how we started gathering this data so that we can have accountability. And lo and behold, this database is turning into something that is more serious, which we are grateful. And at the same time, based on our program on WFM 91.7, you know, we have a, a widow's window program. We have interviewed so many widows have come to us with their stories. And when they have finished telling us, the, telling, talking like their life stories, how they have been taking their things. And I'm glad to tell you people here that so many of them have had their properties recovered after, after coming to a life a life firm radio to talk their story and because of that we now say to ourselves there is need to have a, a, a widow's you know a comprehensive data widow bill that will cover all the issues that goes into the the widowhood the reality is that widowhood's problem is too massive to be locked into a box a, to be boxed in into other issues so we now said to ourselves and decided to take this bill to the national assembly and we have amana we have prepared this bill we have submitted it to the Federal House of the Senate, I mean, sorry, Federal House, Federal House of Assembly in Abuja. And uh, we are still, if not for the COVID, it was very likely, according to the, we submitted the truth on Rebu Adeojo, Adeojo Adeoku, and if not for the COVID, you know, she, he was, the last discussion I had with him before the lock in was that it was very likely to be, to be hearing the first reading by the end of March. But we know that was when the Nigerian law came. So today I call upon you, as we are looking at these two discussions, the, with the Nigerian Widows Database and the Widows Protection Bill, the Nigerian Widows Database, thank God, thank, thank God the Honorable Minister of Women Affairs has become so interested and keen in it, and he has taken it over, and he wants to launch it so that we started this as a palliative widow database, and they are now turning it into a Nigerian database. So today, please, all I'm asking for everybody, let's deliberate on what we can do to address this issue 
because in reality the issue of widowhood is getting is you know is getting so so much painful for the women inside that journey that if each and every one of us especially the vulnerable you know like i always say there are two groups of widows the the, the metropolitan widows that is the life of us that are in the city now roughing it out and have abandoned most of the things that is supposed to be ours for the for the village for for, for, for our fight for the, uh, the family in the village and those that are in the village that are being you know disenfranchised there is a big issue of and a big problem in widowhood which we are we are all going to address so i call upon you people today the discussion is not mine the problem is mine and all the other Tara, uh, and so many other widows there but we want the people, the Nigerians, to get involved, men, women, and everybody, so that we can change the story and build up a, a more comfortable life so that in her loss, she will not lose her fight. Thank you for, and I wish everyone a, 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 a good deliberation on this issue. Thank you, Tara. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Hope. That was a very insightful and well thought out personal story. Now, this is a similar story with a lot of widows. So we thank you so much for taking on this laudable initiative. God bless you. So right up, we'll quickly be moving to our next speaker. Our next speaker will be, um, we're, still, we're still expecting some speakers to join us, but um, I think we have, um, the next speaker, either, either Ibrahim Leva, I think she's on, and if she isn't, then we'll go straight to, um, okay, yes, either is on, yeah. Either, thank you for joining us. Good morning from Lagos, Nigeria. Um, would like to have you on now. You're muted. We can't hear you. I'm talking. Okay, great, okay. great. Mm -hmm. So either is, either is the... Um, She's the she's representing the Global Fund for Widows, and um, she's joining us from the UK, I, I presume. And she's going to be talking about um, the role of the widows database to make widows matter. Either you have the floor, you have five minutes to go, and I'm sure we're going to have an um, engaging time with you. Thank you. Your time starts now. Thank you for this honor, Your Excellency, Madam First Lady, and your honor. Minister and organizer, Hope and Mana Foundation. It's a great honor for the Global Fund for Widows to join this panel this morning. And from pre-dawn hours in New York City, I wish you all a happy International Widows Day. My dear sisters, I launched the Global Fund for Widows 12 years ago with the intention to economically empower widows in my native Egypt. Though through our special consultative status at the United Nations, we've been able to partner with organizations in eight countries to empower 15,000 widows and up to 40,000 of their children. As a Wall Street banker, our program is founded on the simple golden rule, she who has the gold makes the rules. And to this end, I build micro banks for widows that are owned by widows through our own innovation and financial inclusion called the WASALA, the Widows Savings and Loan Association. And we partner with these organizations and use knowledge and information from the field to inform our advocacy, both in Congress, in the House of Lords, and at the United Nations. Speaking of the United Nations, many years ago, I had the opportunity to meet with a very high-ranking ambassador at the UN who happened to be from a country that had a very large population of disinherited widows. And after his presentation to the council, I asked, had the opportunity to ask him a question. Your Excellency, there are 300 million widows in the world, responsible for 500 million children. Widows endure three main human rights violations, disinheritance, discrimination, and violent, harmful customary practices. Recognizing that widows and their children account for 12% of the global population, and recognizing that these widows endure these violent um, and degrading human rights violations, and recognizing that there's not even one single mention of widows in any resolution, much less their own resolution, in any UN body, whether the General Assembly, the Security Council, or the Human Rights Council. What is your intention to address the global issue of widowhood? And the ambassador's answer was simple. I think you're wrong. 
there is no issue with widowhood in my country or any other country. The ambassador's response was revealing and for me an awakening. You see, we cannot blame the ambassador as he probably genuinely is unaware of the plight of widows. In fact, no one in the global north has ever heard of the issue of human rights, uh, the human issue of widowhood, and most people don't believe me when I tell them. Partly this is because widows themselves are silenced by threats or fear of reprisal, or by being reduced in their disinheritance to focus on only one thing, survival. So if the widows are not talking about what's happened to them, how is the ambassador to know? How are governments to know? How is the world to know? We cannot protect widows from human rights violations or provide them with justice if we do not know who they are. Widows must be seen. We must first be seen in order to be heard. And this is why your registry is so important. As you launch this registry, I urge you to ask uncomfortable questions. Widows and unregistered marriages must be included, as must be those of the per widows of the permanently missing, those of forced marriages, abducted brides, and heartbreaking child widows. Do not shy away from asking if widows were disinherited or discriminated against, or if they endured harmful practices. This data will prove invaluable, I promise. I wanna share with you a peek of what the other side of your monumental registry looks like. A few years ago, we partnered with an organization in Kenya. In our first year of partnership, we encouraged them to have a small International Widows' Day as they began their registry. As the registry reflected millions, this, the small celebration turned into an event of thousands and a parade flanked by the uniformed National Guard, a military band leading the procession, and their honorable ministers, minister standing shoulder to shoulder with the widows. Last year, as a result of their national census and widows being included, the results sparked reform. And in the last two years, Kenya has changed six laws to favor widows, and their government is their partner. Nigeria shall be next. I wish to commend Your Excellency, the First Lady, and the Honorable Minister Talon for your intrepid vision and courage and leadership in launching this registry, and to Hope El Mena Foundation for your impassioned leadership and unwavering support. To my fellow NGO leaders, I urge you organize your networks to elicit the most comprehensive response to our minister's inquiry. And to my widowed sisters, the time for silence and fear and despair is over. The time to rent the veil of silence is now. Tell your story. The world is listening. We when we meet again next year, it will be to celebrate International Widows Day together, shoulder to shoulder, hand in hand, with our government, our ministers, our chiefs, our kings, our queens, our priests, our civil society, and yes, even our so ambassador. Thank you. Thank you so much, Heather, for such um, a short, precise um, um, intro and um, the reasons why we must tell our stories and share our stories because until the world knows what is going on and until we focus as a light on what is what um, widows are facing then the world will be in denial and they, they would pretend that they do not know and they can't see what is happening to people and that's why the database must come out and must you know, every nation needs to have a database of the widows, you know, because we take care of the children who we'll grow up to be the adults and who are the future of every nation. Thank you so much. We Thank really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies, for joining us. We expect more participants. Um, we, would, we will be getting soon um, a representative from the first um, lady joining us before. She comes on, or would be taking um, Yetunde Moreneke the Ajani Raji, who is a widow also, and she'll be talking about why widows should be counted. She's going to be supporting either statements, you know, by telling us why we must have a widows. Thank you. Yetunde, please, the floor is yours. Five minutes to speak, and uh, thank you once again. Please, can you? On mute, um, Yetunde, please. Yetunde, you can unmute from your end. Okay. Hello. Hello. We can hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. Good morning, ladies. Your Excellency, Aisha Aisha Muhammad Buhari, Honorable.
Honorable Minister of Women Affairs, the distinguished keynote speaker, and other speakers. It's a privilege to be missed this morning to celebrate International Widows Day 2020. I'm going to back up what El Ibrahim just said by chipping in my own personal story for you first. I became an amputee widow on the 31st of May, 2012. In an accident, my husband wasn't fortunate to make, but not without spending three months in the hospital, various hospitals, that was denied access to my children for two years. I was bedridden for eight months. And coming back to Nigeria in 2014, April, wasn't a palatable one for me. I lost basically everything I had in form of business while I was away in the hospital. You know what it is, even when you're on grand, you, they are not doing it right, not to talk of you being away for two years. I came back and um, I was distracted, abandoned and rejected by friends and family because of my new status. How is she going to cope? How will she exert? How will she make it? I wasn't just an amputee. I lost my right, I, I lost my left leg in that accident. I have my right leg in, an, in, in plates and screws. I have dislocation of shoulders. My wrist is equally bad. I still have a pipe in this eye that should have been there for six months. But this is over seven years that I had there simply because I couldn't get an oroplastic surgeon. And when I had to travel out to go and see what I could, start all over again. The procedure was, is going to be long. I have to spend nine months. And the, the financial aspect of it is not what a widow, an amputee widow like me can bear. But if government is ready to back widows, have a um, database for widows in Nigeria, this will cushion a lot of things for us. You have widows today that um, simply because they have lost their husband, they are losing virtually everything in their lives. You see where widows uh, family will go to their husband's places of work and tell them to change them as not to be the next of kin to that man's um, will. Some will be ejected like um, Madam Hope said earlier. I have a friend that was not allowed into her husband's uh, burial phone era. You know, the friend started, they told her she killed it husband. I've not seen any widow, whether in Africa, in Nigeria, that is not responsible for that man's death. So when they tell you that you kill your man, it's not a big thing. But if government can start taking our data, this will take care of the children. It will take care of to cushion the effects. All some widows need among us is just a little push. Just push them, give them that edge, and they will go miles for you. People can write you off. They can tell you you cannot do this, you cannot do that. But you are not prove, trying to prove anybody right for what you can do and what you cannot do. What you can do lies within, within you. You only have to tell yourself that what they told you you cannot do. You can do far better than that. Remember, because we don't have enough um, accurate database in Nigeria, we have 350 million widow globally as a third of February 2020. And we have um, 15 million or so and still counting in Nigeria. Many of these widows' children did not ask for it. We never asked to be a widow, but nature presented it by our doors, and we just have to live by it. But your husband died does not mean you should end your own life. Start afresh and make something meaningful out of your life. Stop going around to beg, but probably if government should give us, start counting, start counting to make provision for widows and their children. All this will stop or will be reduced to minimal, minimal rate. We have so much to be done, and we have to know that um, government should call have a solution in, that, um, that can prevent the family of these widows as well, that these people are somebody, stop harassing them, let stigmatization leave them, let them live a new life as normal people. Anybody can turn to a widow, Nobody asked for it. You didn't write to be one. Hello. Hello. Uh, Hello. Yes, we, we've gotten you back now. Okay, okay. good. Yeah. It's only that can actually tell their stories. It's only those that can express their hardship. Many untold stories get some of us still wear our smiles in, the, in spite of all difficulties. Many will prefer widows to be invisible, forgotten sufferers, but you as a widow must not give anyone this satisfaction. 
The estimated number of women, like I said earlier, worldwide is 50 million globally. And we have a third of February 2020 and with 3.5 million widows in Nigeria. And this number keeps increasing on a daily basis. From being ostracized in Nigeria society to being left to fend for ourselves and our children, in spite of all challenges, proves the need for our voice to be heard and for reforms to be put in place in order for widows to have better and favorable living conditions. Um, one major challenge that ought with most widows is the psychological effect it leaves on them and their children. When you label them or you, you regret, neglect them and you reject them, this is only affecting that woman. It's affecting the children's future because some of them are likely to start doing what they shouldn't do. I just can't tell a widow that a child started doing drugs. She was tired. She couldn't cope. Just like two days ago, a widow called me from Akure. She was tired of life. She wanted to take her own life, but some of us should be there, not just to provide financial aspect for these widows. When it happens, give your shoulders to them. Give them a word of advice. I reassure them that nobody was born to be super. They can always excel with this problem. Thank you, Yechide um, Morani Keji Ajani Raji. Thank you for your, um, for your story. Um, you've, um, you've told us what it is like to be a widow in Nigeria. And now what it means to share your story. Um, we'll be going to the next speaker. Like I said earlier, um, we have given an allotted five minutes each to each speaker because we have quite a lineup of speakers. Oh, so we'll be going next to um, the representative of the First Lady of the Nation, Dr. Mrs. Aisha Muhammad Buhari, Nigeria First Ladies, ably represented by Dr. Ajo Sani, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Women's Affairs and Administration and of the Office of the First Lady. Dr. Sani, please take, um, it, it, it's your turn to speak and please um, would like to hear from you. Are you connected? We can't seem to see you. Dr. Sani, are you online? She, yes, I am. Are you, are you hearing me too? Yes, yes. we can. Thank you, you so much for me. joining us. Yeah, thank you. We cannot very much see also. you though. We can't yeah. see you, but we can hear you. You can. Are you seeing me too? No, we can't. no, we can't see you yet. Um. So we are doing the connection. I, I don't know. I'm using my phone. Okay. Oh no. Okay. I think I it's think from it's you. Your video. Yes, please. Try, are you kindly, seeing please. me? Are you seeing me? Not yet, ma not yet, ma'am. Please click on your video. Click on the video. But while you're doing that, ma'am, you can go ahead speaking, and I'm sure that your video will come up soon. Uh, okay, thank you very much. I'm really happy to be part of this uh, discussion on widows in Nigeria. And as a widow myself, it's nice uh, to share a bit of my personal um, experience. Uh, which sometimes when even I spoke at the United Nations during one of my presentations as a Minister of Women Affairs, I shared my story because this is something the Western world is looking up to and try and wanting to know more about what is happening in African countries. Because the impression over there is women generally, widows generally, go through a number of uh, harmful traditional practices soon after they lost their, uh, their loved ones. And I was able to share myself, my, my own self uh, experience to even say that in the part of Nigeria, I come from the Northern Nigeria. Hello, ma'am. Dr. Sani, we can't hear you anymore. Well, let's work this out. Actually, thank you. Are you still with us? I think it's the network. Okay. She's back. Okay. We still can't see her. 
to you either. Uh, are, you, are, you, are you hearing me? Are you seeing me? No, not we're yet, not ma. seeing you yet, ma'am. Oh, but we God. can hear you now. <laughs> okay. I think it's from your network. So, like I was saying, in the northern part of Nigeria, despite the fact that the social system protects women in terms of inheritance, many still suffer, you know, the untold abuse of their rights. And in general, in generally in Nigeria, we know that we widows we suffer social pains psychologically, emotionally, after losing their husbands, harassment from the pair, I mean the husband's uh, side and so on and so on. I, I'm sure this is what most of, uh, most of us will try to share and to relate in this discussion. But uh, from my own part of experience, I was able to say that yes, my husband died in a motor accident. Uh, the person responsible taking care of my children I think I'm able to do it and be able to do it personally because uh, of, of my educational level and because of the fact that um, I am empowered economically and um, educationally rather and I have a job that is supporting me. But I look at my colleagues, my other fellow widows in the rural areas and um, I think this is where the problem is. And I want to assure you that uh, Her Excellency, the First Lady of Nigeria with a future assure program uh, is a set pairs, uh, is a pair setter in this regard. Dr. Aisha Muhammad Buhari shall be empowering a number of women and uh, widows in particular across the country, uh, economically and uh, particularly regarding their health issues. These are two award programs. Main focus is to improve the health and welfare of women and uh, that I'm sure is what most of the widows across the country are enjoying. So I, I would say that uh, if you continue to do more and uh, she's also looking at the possibility of uh, coming up with a presidential tax force whereby just like what she did with the drug abuse, a presidential task force was set up under uh, General Marwa and completed the report submitted to Mr. President and now she is coming up with that on gender-based violence as well as uh, widowhood rights. So I think we are doing something. And I think with people like minds, like uh, people who are those that are participating at this forum, I'm sure we'll continue to do more. We continue to advocate. We continue to empower. We continue to discuss. We continue to create awareness whereby the rights of widows should be protected and widows should enjoy every right and should not continue to suffer psychologically due to the loss of their hands. And particularly, I will welcome those NGOs that will continue to work in this area, particularly in those parts of country, especially in the southern part of the country, where the issue of widowhood is really very serious. So I will say uh, shortly, uh, thank you as organizers uh, of this forum and urge that the issue discussed here will be uh, rebatable and uh, into better and more formidable action in favor of widows. I thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Hajo Sani. Thank yeah. you to, the, to Her Excellency, the First Lady of Nigeria. Yeah. Thank you for your interest in the plight of widows and we believe that together. We'll yeah, I can see you. I see me now. We finally see, see you, you now. Thank you so much. Thank you, <laughs> thank you for sharing your personal That's stories. Personal. And yeah. I'm yeah. sure that with you on board, yeah. especially with your experience and your um, knowledge, we will be able to put together a um, database for widows and achieve a uh, yeah. uh, milestones in respect of this. We're very thank grateful. You. And our, our, our greetings to the First Lady, Our Excellency. Um, Dr. Mrs. Aisha Muhammad Buhari. Thank you very yeah, thank much. You very, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Have you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, thank ladies, you. for joining us. Um, we'll would now be taking on um, the Minister of Human, um, Women Affairs. Um, she's uh, the person of Dame Pauline Talen. We want to commend her for um, standing with the widows. We want to commend her for the work she's done. You know, she's taking this up because she knows and that um, 
quite a number of women are suffering. I, I do recollect that she's from Plato State, and I know that she severally has been in the forefront, you know, of um, talking against the injustice meted out to women and supporting women, especially when they, they've lost their livelihood and their wife and their husbands and being on the forefront of so many protests, you know, to ensure that women's rights are protected and that the vulnerable in the society are also protected. So without much ado, let us please welcome the Honorable Minister of Women Affairs, Dame Pauline Tallinn. Thank you very much, ma'am. Hello? Are you online, ma? Are you online, ma? Okay, I think our network. Hello, ma'am. We can't see or hear you, ma'am. Maybe it's network. Maybe it's network. Maybe. Well. Oh, she's there, she, I'm told, but we can't hear her. Could oh, she be unmuted? Oh, no, it's not recording. I'm told that she's she's here and she's speaking, but uh, no one can hear her. Hello, Tara, let's see if we can find her. We can't see her here, Tara. Oh. She's not. She's she's not in. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm told she's there. I just want to be sure yeah. that um she's um. Let's try and find her. That she has not looked into. She's, she's not, not here. here. She's not here. Okay. She's not here. Okay. So we'll wait for her and uh, move to the next person as soon as um she comes in. We'll take uh um, okay, so we'll take the next speaker. In the person of barista, Linda Ugoma Okwe. She's a, she's a barista at law who was raised by a widow. She'll be talking about the need for weed, for widow protection law. We can't overemphasize the fact that widow's rights are one of the most prominent human rights infractions the world over. So it's pertinent for us to have a widow's protection law. So, Barrister Linda, you're up next. Please unmute yourself and have the floor. Barrister Linda, are you here? Okay, I think she's gone off again. Technology is still becoming this part of the world. She's not, I, I think she has gone at the house. Can you call another person where we're not? Tara, Tara, can we call another person where we're waiting for? I think she's back. I think she's back. Okay, can you see her now? Linda, this is not Linda. Oh, okay. I, hello, I'm told that the minister is on now. Are you on, ma'am? Yes, please, ma'am, if you're on, we can't hear you. Can you please um, start? We can't hear her. Maybe you should pick the next available person. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, we're just trying to ensure that um, that um, everything is everyone that ought to be on is on. Right. So we would go to the next speaker. Sonia, Sonia, yeah. Please, for pardon me. I I can see you are online. Please confirm you are with us. Um, hello, Tara. I think I can see, and um, 
I can see Foluka here. If Foluka is around, let her be talking. Okay, um, I, I think I see um, Comfort Lab T. Yes. So if um, she is here, please yes. can she can mm -hmm. she speak? She's the um, UN Women Affairs Country Rep. We're so sorry for the network issues and the fact that people are on, but we can't hear them. So please, if um, Miss Comfort Lab T is on, please can we can we have you now? Thank you so much. Please can you unmute her? Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Good morning, everyone. Uh, morning. Your Excellency, the First Lady of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Dr. Aisha Muhammadu Buhari, the Honorable um, Minister of Women's Affairs, Her Excellency Dame Pauline Talon, uh, founder of Almana Hope Foundation, Madam Hope Inkwakwesi, uh, distinguished panelists and participants, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if there are any gentlemen, but uh, let me <laughs> say thank you very much. It's such an honor for me on behalf of you and women uh, to make a few remarks on the theme of the importance of the database to planning and development uh, today on the occasion of International Women's Day, uh, Widows Day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> As yeah, you know, the UN uh, and the world has been commemorating International Widows Day since 2011. Uh, and UN Women uh, firmly believes in the importance of spotlighting uh, the issue, issues faced by widows in line with uh, the sustainable development goals of leave, uh, principle of leaving no one behind. Um, and also also, in, in as enshrined in international law, including the in Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. Uh, to date, we estimate there are approximately 258 million widows uh, all over the world. This is a huge uh, uh, population, and indeed, um, we must work collectively to ensure that their voices are in, 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 involved in all decision making. So for International Widows Day, it is an opportunity to call for action to advance widows' rights, um, their entitlement to land and inheritance, social protection, uh, uh, regardless of marital status, decent work and equal pay, issues of education and training opportunities, and also addressing sexual and gender-based violence. We have seen from the COVID-19 pandemic also that um this amplifying unique challenges that are faced by women um, and their uh, children many women are struggling to provide for their families and um, the loss of income and food shortages uh, as well as the spike in violence against women also increases the vulnerability of of uh, widows okay. uh, we all need to understand the unique child better the unique challenges that face are uh, faced by widows because um as uh, uh dr hajasani said the the expense is not uh even but we do need to uh probe deeper and data collection is important uh to understanding uh the experiences of 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 widows um maybe i'll take this uh, opportunity to highlight uh, some of the types of data collection that are necessary for for driving both program and, and policy development that can promote and protect the rights of widows in Nigeria as, as you asked me to do. So firstly, I think we need to have large scale quantitative data because uh, numbers often speak louder than words. And because before we can begin to address the problem, we need to understand the scale of it. Uh, we need to know how many widows we have in Nigeria for proper planning and budgeting. We need reliable statistics at the national, state, and local government levels, which will inform and implement interventions at each of these levels. The National Bureau for Statistics and the federal uh, and state ministries of women's affairs are key partners to drive this in partnership with local CSOs, such as the Almana Hope Foundation. Secondly, uh, we need comprehensive qualitative data because this will enable us to have in-depth understanding and appreciation of the differential needs of both younger and older widows, uh, those with children, those without children, those with support structures and those without. 
and then those who are facing intersecting and multiple forms of discrimination, such as widows who are living with disabilities, HIV AIDS, and those who are um, in conflict affected parts of the country. So we can only gain this um, understanding by listening to individual groups and particular stories and experiences. But more importantly, we need mixed methods of data collection to understand the cultural practices and barriers that promote violence and discrimination against women, uh, widows, and what laws and policies that are currently in place at both state and local levels, and how these can be better enforced to support widows' rights. We also need to understand different widows' economic status, including if they have access to credit or other economic resources. We will need data to enable us to answer the following questions. Are they dependent on husband's relatives? Are they disowned by relatives, married off to relatives, or forced into informal work as domestic laborers, or even trafficking uh, for, uh, or for prostitution? Uh, we also need data and information about the levels and forms of violence that widows face in Nigeria. Uh, we know that widows are often subject to physical and mental uh, violence um, related to land and property disputes, that they are coerced, to coerce into harmful and, and even life-threatening uh, uh, traditional practices. We've, uh, we're all familiar with that. So understanding the prevalence of these harmful practices will be key to uh, effective interventions. We also need data and information about widows' health and well-being. Uh, many widows have limited access to proper nutrition and shelter, uh, and some are also vulnerable in the context of HIV AIDS uh, and HIV and AIDS. So we need to ensure that we understand the linkages between the economic insecurity that uh, stems from widowhood and um, other kinds of risky behaviors, uh, such as trans transactional sex, uh, um, that may risk, um, uh, that may be uh, further exacerbated even in this COVID-19 pandemic. And it is important to invest in data collection and research that focuses on how in parts of the country that have been affected by conflicts such as the Northeast, uh, how these have increased the numbers and, and, uh, of widows in Nigeria, as well as how the COVID-19 pandemic is also increasing the numbers of widows. Uh, and then uh, we need also to know what widows are doing in terms of their voice and agency to drive their own issues. And this involves mapping out national, state, and local widows organizations to explore best practices for replication and for scaling up, and to promote leadership from within the widow community so the widows can um, be key players and agents of change in the development of solutions. Uh, finally, we need to also map out who are the key partners uh, that are working with uh, widows and understand how different stakeholders uh, and what different stakeholders are doing on the ground because uh, a problem as complex as widows' rights requires both joint and collaborative effort. Let me um, say uh, briefly that uh, UN Women, uh, in the context of this COVID response, we've been working very closely with the ministry, Federal Ministry of Women's Affairs to support widows and other uh, vulnerable groups. Uh, through the distribution of palliative items, uh, we did um, the, the launch of this last Friday with the Honorable Minister, and we hope to reach 16 uh, uh, states of the Federation as well as FCT. Uh, and we are also looking at um, uh, programs uh, going forward that will help cushion uh, uh, vulnerable populations, including widows, in the recovery phase. Uh, let me thank the efforts of the Almana Foundation for driving these uh, concrete initiatives to promote and protect the rights of widows in Nigeria. And on behalf of you and women, I'd like to pledge our unwavering support to your efforts and our commitment to ensuring that widows are not left behind in broader efforts to build back better as Nigeria begins to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you very much. 
Thank you so much, Ms. Comfort Lampe, UN Women Country Rep. We thank you for, the, for your um, support and we thank you for um, all the measures that you, you've, um, you're seeking to take, especially the fact that you know, you've been able to um, ensure that women, widows of all ages, you know, there's a reference to women of all ages because widows is, 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 a, is a specific thing and it, it, it differs between people. You have the old, the young, where you're catering for all classes and categories of widows, both the vulnerable, the educated and the uneducated. We thank you so much for what you've said. Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you. And next we'll be going to um, someone who has um, supported us, you know, immensely and has been very, very, um, um, she's, she's been in the forefront of the support for women. I'd said earlier on that um, even before she became Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, she's been in the forefront for um, advocacy, advocating for women's rights and advocating for widows. You know, I, I've watched a lot of pro, um, um, TV clips of her being in forefront protesting in our own state, Plato State, you know, in support and leading the women. So without much ado, and we're very, we apologize profusely for, you know, the connection issues, madam, we would um, invite, um, the Honorable Minister of um, Women Affairs of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Dame Pauline Talen, OFR KCG, to please address us on this issue. We, we must say again that um, she supported and the ministry has supported this initiative with a lot, a lot of um, support from them. Thank you very much, ma'am. Please do kindly your unmute speech. yourself, ma'am. Please kindly unmute yourself and give your speech. And you can start your video. Or please can you unmute her, uh, moderator? You are muted. Hello, can you hear me now? Even the video. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, we can, we hear, can you. hear you. Welcome, ma'am. Can you see me? Yes, yes we can see you, ma'am. Good morning, Good morning ma'am. Ma 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 and thank you once more for your support. Thank you very no, much. No, I can't say that. All of you, I want to start by sincerely commending the Almana Hope Foundation for the wonderful work you are doing in touching lives and putting smiles on the faces of widows all across the country. I want, to, I want to assure you that my commitment to issues affecting widows is total. And I join all widows all over the world, especially Nigeria, to celebrate as we commemorate the International Day of Widows. I want to acknowledge the representative of the First Lady of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, ably represented by my sister, Dr. Hajosani. I want to acknowledge um, all founders and members of uh, Almana Hope Foundation. I want to acknowledge my dear sister, Comfort Lamti, whom I'm missing. She is home uh, to see her mom, I'm sure. She's enjoying the weather in uh, Ghana now. Comfort, nice to see you. And I'm happy that you have linked up with us on this uh, Zoom meeting. International Widows Day is a day of creating global awareness all over the world on issues affecting widows. The launch by the United Nations in 2010 has set aside issues of awareness violation of human rights that women go through in many countries following the death of their spouses which automatically throws them into widowhood the 2020 team is invisible women invisible problems 
The team is based on the fact that widows are invisible in policy makers, uh, invisible to policy makers when they draw out national policies to address problems of citizens. I want to tell you that under the able leadership of uh, President Mohamed Dubari, widows will never be invisible. Under my watch as Minister of Women Affairs, widows are top on my agenda. The girl child is top on my agenda because if our daughters, if women are educated, they are fully equipped and they cannot face problems that are associated with widowhood. I, as I'm speaking to you, I'm also a widow. I lost my husband three years ago, but because of my background, because of uh, my educational background and what I've achieved in life, I, 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 I am someone that cannot lean or expect to depend 100% on a man. So there's a need for us, the, the, the greatest advocacy we need to do is to ensure that our women, our daughters, our children are educated. Education is key because once you are educated, you are equipped and equipped for life to face any situation. An educated woman cannot be thrown around anyhow. An educated woman cannot be forced to sit and drink the water that they, they bat her husband with it. I mean, you don't, it's only when you are not fully educated, you will be at the mercy of all these harmful traditional habits. And because you expect to dance to their tune, you expect to rely on them, maybe because of whatever the husband has left behind, you will now go through all these pains. And for those that are already in this state and are uneducated, if, I mean, it's never too late to learn. It's never, never too late. So education is top and we must do that to equip and prepare for the rainy day. Experiences of many women in Nigeria, no matter this class, who have suddenly found themselves in such situations, leave a lot to be desired. The period of bereavement associated with widow, widowhood has been described by many as the most difficult time of life, which constitutes a source of emotional, physical, and mental stress. This is further worsened by the inability of family members and societies to stand with the widows at this trying period to enable her recover. In some cultures, a widow is further subjected to so many dehumanizing widowhood practices, such as shaving of hairs, wearing of black and white clothes, sleeping and sitting on the floor or mat, being refrained from batting for a number of days, seclusion and being made to swear with husband's cups, and drinking the water which the cup's husband was washed before they were. So many horrible issues that are on heart of. These are some of the problems we're tackling, harmful traditional practices that are meted on women. It's part of my advocacy that I'm launched, uh, wherever I go, all the states I visit on advocacy, we emphasize that to our traditional rulers, to our policy makers, that this must stop and stop at once. We will continue to push, we must continue to fight for this because we can no longer continue to treat women as beasts of burden. The children of widows are not spared from these inhuman situations. They often find themselves affected, especially when they are young, withdrawn from school, and more vulnerable to abuse, especially in the case of girls. With the rampaging effect of COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of people have lost their means of livelihood, including widows. The situation of the average widow becomes more precarious as they most times locked into their homes with empty hands and stomach for fear of stigmatization and rejection by the community. But I have good news for all widows in Nigeria. Widowhood is not a cause, neither is it a condemnation to hell. So I want to use this opportunity to urge all widows 
to stand strong and tall in the face of adversities. Believing that there is always the storm. It is always, the storm does not last forever. I also wish to use this occasion to appeal to our traditional leaders and to also look inwards to ensure that they do away with these practices as they do not represent the beauty of humanity. The present administration of President Madhubari has declared a zero tolerance to rape and other gender-based violence, which many widows are subjected to. We will continue to push for this. I want to assure you, Amana Hope Foundation, we will work together and continue to push that our widows have some respite. Our widows have a sense of longing. Our widows have the support, economic support, whatever economic support we, uh, we reach out to women, the rest are sure that widows are top of my agenda. Uh, I'm sure Comfort is here listening. She had mentioned it, I'm sure, in her speech. We've mapped out 17 states to reach out to support them with palliatives. It's not just any woman. We say it's widows. Widows were the, our top priority, and we kicked off this program two days ago with uh, the country director of UN Women, uh, Comfort Lamti. Two days ago, we were in a, on Friday, to be precise, we were in Ushafa, and we'll reach out to other states within the next uh, 10 days. We'll cover the 17 states. As a ministry, we have ensured that widows are included in our programs. This informed the inclusion of widow groups in our distribution of palliatives and uh, other empowerment programs. I've reached out to the Minister of Agri, we are drawing out a special uh, emp uh, empowerment program to support women in agriculture, but priority is to women. The same with the Ministry of Trade and Investment, our priority are widows. And I want to assure them that we'll keep pushing and pushing because they are the most vulnerable. As we go about programming for this segment of the society, we need to be more strategic. This means that we require data. Therefore, our collaboration at this time with Almana Foundation and Women Radio is very timely as it will further enhance our planned interventions at different levels of engagement. In this regard, I wish to call on all who are working with leaders, who are working for leaders, to join hands with us in this drive to build a credible database for leaders in Nigeria. It is uh, my pleasure and honor to humbly launch the database for widows in Nigeria. I thank you all for your uh, understanding. I thank you for listening. And may God bless each one of you that is sparing time, resources to put smiles on our widows. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Honorable Minister. We're so um, appreciative of your speech, especially knowing that you are one of us and he who um, feels the pinch knows where he pinches, he who wears the shoes knows where he pinches. We thank your ministry for all it has done. We thank you for co collaborating and for ensuring that widows' um, welfare and um, uh, their issues are forefront in your in the ministry's initiatives. We're very glad and we thank you for the support that the ministry, ministry and you in particular have shown towards the plight of widows in Nigeria. We, we're very grateful. Thank you so much, Ma. And we apologize yeah. once more for all the connection issues. We thank you for the support. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Ma. Bye. I'm rushing for another meeting. We, we understand and appreciate, Ma. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so Bye. much, Ma. Bye. Up next, we're going to be having a very special person too. We know that in the forefront of every fight and every form of advocacy, the media is very key because if the story is not out there, if nobody is there to carry it as a viral call, we, it will just be an effort in futility. So our next guest is Ms. Tom Okewole Sonyana. Sonyana, please pardon me. She's the CEO of Women Radio 97.1 FM. 
Now she'll be taking us on the role of the media to widow's agenda. So please take the floor. Stone, please unmute, unmute your mic and um, your video. Thank you. You have five minutes. Thank you. I saw you a while ago. I hope the network is not playing a trick again. She's saying yes, I'm ready. Yeah, okay. Please unmute yourself and we would like to see you too. She's not here. She's not here. That's, can we try while we're trying? Sorry, we can't see her. She's not here in the... She is. She is. She's we can't see her here. We can't see her. We can't see her. Yeah. I know she's uh, alive, but we can't see her inside the system. Okay. Okay. Why we're trying to connect her? Why well, we're trying to connect to her? Yes. Can you do... I think I can see what Uju, Uju Ako is part of... Part she of says she's speaking already, but... um. Cannot um we can't hear you, Mrs. Shunaya. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Could you please unmute your phone? Your mic, rather. Just hold on, we have 10 seconds. It's coming up, it's coming up, it's coming up. It's coming up. It's coming up. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh, she's here. Okay. okay, we can see. We can see. We can see your name. We can see our name yet, but um, our mic isn't unmuted yet. Neither can we see our video. Now. Okay, yes. So, Ms. Chanaya, please can you um, take unmute the floor, yourself. unmute yourself and take the floor. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. But, but we can't see go, you. you. I will just go straight to the point, please. Thank you very much, ladies. Thank you. I would like to acknowledge the First Lady of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Excellency Dr. Mrs. Aisha Muhammad Buhari, who was ably represented by Dr. Haji Hosani. I would particularly love to acknowledge the Honorable Minister of Women Affairs, Dame Pauline Talen. Dame Talen, I thank you very much for making today possible. And I need to single you women. Comfort Lamte, the UN country representative, thank you very much for always supporting women. Hope Mwakwesi, you've become a sister, and I thank God for your strength, your unwavering commitment to truly empower every widow. To every widow, we acknowledge you because today is all about you, and all protocols are duly observed and recognized. Widows are women, and widows have rights. Widows are a part of our society, and widows deserve to be seen and be heard. They are strong and they contribute to the development of our society. Widows are breadwinners, but widows are marginalized, yet they survive the odds. It is pertinent that the voices of widows are heard. It is key that the plights of widows are addressed. The law, especially the Nigerian law, must protect widows, especially from all cultural and traditional harmful practices. In achieving the widow's agenda, the media, which plays a vital role in educating, in informing, and entertaining is very essential to the widow's agenda. The media must work harder to change the narratives of widows. The media must address the widow's agenda. The media must lead in speaking against harmful, traditional, and cultural practices. The media must change the perception of the public about widows, many of who experience peculiar difficulties and deprivations that impact their livelihood, their health, and well being. This is why Women Radio pioneered Nigeria's first widows program on radio. It was an initiative of Hope Mwakwesi the founder of Almana Hope. Widow's Window addresses the challenges of widows. 
It is a program that was on for two years and we had to disconnect. We had to stop this program because of financial challenge. This is why we are having this discussion here today. Everything that matters to widows, everything that has to do with widows, we need to take it seriously. I am using this opportunity to thank you, Hope Mwakwesi, for coming up with the initiative of Widows Window. And I can assure you that Women Radio will continue to support you with this. We are all gathered here today to launch the Nigerian Widows Database and discuss the Widows Protection Bill. These are two big milestones in the achievement of the Widows Agenda. We owe it to you, Hope, because you have the interest of every widows at heart. It is our duty as participants, it is our duty as media, and it is our duty as government to ensure that we lend a voice and be a voice for the widow's agenda. And that is why I urge every widow, every child, if you have a mother that is a widow, make sure they are registered on the database. Make sure that they benefit from the database. Please once again be assured of the unwavering support of Women Radio in supporting the Widow's Window and Almana Hope. I would love to thank you, Hope, and the team of Almana Hope Foundation for putting this together. You're respected, you're admired, and I love you. My name is Tung Okiwali Shonaya. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Shonaya. Thank you so much for all you do for the widows and for women in general through the, through the Women's Radio. We are absolutely excited that our voice has been heard because you are championing the cause. Thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. Up next, we'll be going straight on to another speaker. Her name is Ms. Uju Ukuke Mwakalwa. She's a filmmaker. Now, you know the power of film in telling the story of everything we, are, we have to say. Now, she'll be, she'll be speaking on the power of film in changing the widowhood culture. Mrs. Luju, you're up next. Please unmute your mic, and we would also like to see you. Please start your video. You have five minutes. Thank you so much. Okay, can you see me? Yes, we can. Yes. All right. Um, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hello, can you see me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, yes, yes I we can. can. Please we can hear you and hear you. Hello? We can see you. We can Hello, hear good you. Good morning. We can go see ahead. and hear you. Please go ahead. We can see you. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone, and thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. I appreciate the Almanaho Foundation for this um, fantastic initiative. I have just five minutes, so I'll be very brief. Um, fame, it's a powerful tool that can be used to change lives, narratives, and even perception of countries. You know, uh, most developed countries has used the power of fame to drive change and influence people's uh, perception about their country. And they use films to push any cause they want, any cause at all. So when you see some things in, for example, Hollywood, it did not happen. There's someone behind the scenes working it out. So I believe um, it's about time we change some of the widowhood, uh, bad widowhood culture in Nigeria and Africa through films. And the best way, in my opinion, to achieve this is by number one, um, through collaboration and uh, partnership. I would like to encourage uh, not just this foundation, Amalahu Foundation, but every uh, widow foundation in Nigeria, you know, to design the kind of narrative they want to be pushed out there and partner with um, not good movie, uh, movie producers and directors to plug it in their films. And let's not forget that some of these filmmakers are the product of our society, whereby they grew up witnessing these bad cultural practices. This is the story they see and hear and know. But if someone says to them, 
that these are no longer in vogue, these are no longer being practiced. They will start projecting scenes in films where widows are treated um, dignity. The same goes for uh, filmmakers. They have to invest in research, you know, ask questions. We have widows everywhere around us, and all we need to do is find them and ask them and learn of their struggles, even when they don't, they, don't have, they don't have to come to us before we can highlight some of these issues in films. And But how about we go out there and work hard and find it? I understand that research costs money, but you know we can actually do it as part of our CSR and it's a very worthy venture because we just are human, you know, and I want the society to, to understand that every married man and woman is a potential widow or widower. This is a quote by Madame Vera um, in a documentary I produced for a Widow's Window Africa initiative. I have never forgotten this powerful quote by that lovely lady. And I want everyone to always remember this, always. Perhaps it will change the way we treat widows in this part of the world. Mm. So with the launch of this uh, database and some policy change making, I will encourage the various widow associations and groups again to engage with the Nollywood uh, leadership. Uh, and I believe that this partnership will favor everyone involved. And when people start to see this thing, these things and these changes in films and documentaries within a short time, I believe that the barbaric culture of widowhood um, culture in Nigeria will end and it also affect the whole of Africa. And it would be great for the Federal Ministry of Women Affairs um, to also invest in production of short documentary. Hello. Hello, Ma. Are you there? Seems like the network has. Hello, Ma. Hello, Mrs. Akukwe. We can't hear you. We can't hear you, Ma. I think it's the network. I think it's the network. Can we now, you know, call uh, Bukola? Bukola, it's the network. Let's move on. Okay. Let's move on to Bukola. Okay. Okay, we'll move, we'll move right to the next speaker. I call him Mrs. Poluke Adimoku, who's going to talk about the need for all stakeholders to come together to collaborate to fight this good fight. Please, you have thank the floor, and you have five minutes. Thank yeah, you. Good morning. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, um, uh, Excellency, the First Lady of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Dr. Mrs. Uh, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, Her Excellency, the Honorable Minister for Women Affairs, Dem Talin Pauline, uh, Dem Pauline Talin, excuse me, please, uh, the UN Women, our uh, convener, Hope Almana Foundation Women Radio, and uh, all protocol, like they say over here, duly observed. I want to say thank you, you know, uh, for this uh, moment. It's create a very, very inspiring moment. Uh, talk about the need for collaboration by all stakeholders. I think um, from what I've heard so far, there's uh, a real reason for us to come together as stakeholders. And that was, uh, one of the reasons is to scope, to scope the process of the management of data from the UN Women, from the Ministry of Women Affairs, from uh, the Office of the First Lady, even um, Women Radio and uh, the convener herself, we've had, you know, uh, reasons why we should be doing this to scope what direction should we head, and that's very important. I always you know, say to people that uh, women, we are not one homogeneous group, we are heterogeneous. And so also when we talk about widows, the, the, the dynamics are changing. The demographics of widows in Nigeria is also changing, so we need you know, to focus on that. Before now, attention was on welfare. 
But now with younger widows, we see lots of very young widows you know, coming you know, uh, 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 into play, maybe due to insurgency and um, so this is accident like somebody has shared our experience. So we also need you know, to, to focus on the demographics and that's why we need different stakeholders who will share their perspective because we are working from different you know, angles. There are people who are working on the health of widows on legal assistance, people who are working on economic empowerment, on poverty reduction. So we all need you know, to come together you know, as one you know, to, to address this issue. Secondly, uh, we are working together because we want to promote ownership. We want to promote you know, ownership you know, of the database. We want to uh, promote support for it. We don't want it to be seen as one uh, person's uh, database. It's a database for everyone working on widows' issues. So we must come together to promote it as such and to also help the widows themselves. Because of the idea of um, widowhood as a welfare thing, you see widow moving from one organization to another. But if you have a database, we will know uh, who our beneficiaries are. I will know who will come to my foundation, Ajaka Ishata Fulabi Foundation, you know, what the best, what uh, support we are provided and what Hope Foundation is also providing. It will also help widows themselves to be focused on empowering themselves. It will help us to focus on widows empowerment rather, you know, than um, our welfare. And uh, in the context of Agenda 2030 and the Sustainable Development Goal 17, we see that partnership is key to, pro to, to promoting inclusion, to ensuring that no one I will leave no one behind. The UN women stress on that. Important we leave no one behind. If you look at the team for this year's you know, um, Widows Day, it has been a, the team we have seen before. It's like it's recycled. Every time we are talking about invisible women, invisible problem. Well, I align with the Honorable Minister for Women and Affairs. No longer in Nigeria would we refer to our widows as invisible. And um, that will bring me to the conclusion of why we need. Uh, to work there. It's because we need to adopt an entrepreneurial approach to the widows' issues. We have the technical aspect of it, which we are hoping that civil society organizations will help provide. We also have the funding aspect of it, which, you know, with the help of our multilateral organizations and other wealthy individuals, you know, uh, we can provide. And then we talked about the managerial aspect of all of this, the political will, the infrastructure, Infrastructure in terms of soft and hard infrastructure policies, you know, that will make life easy for widows in terms of the addition of their children, in terms of their livelihoods improvement, in terms of their health. It will, oh, I, I'm sure we are aware that we don't even have uh, in place, our uh, hospitals in Nigeria do not have a program to manage uh, uh, post uh, traumatic stress, you know, disorder. When widows know that just all of us then exposed to the loss of their spouse. Who cares, you know, the emotional, you know, uh, rigor, the emotional stress that they go through. We do not have things in place to take, you know, care of, you know, such immediate uh, exposure to, to shock. And when we come together, you know, as a team, government, uh, the private sector, the organizations, and even the widows themselves, we'll be able to Other countries, you see private sectors supporting initiatives like this on the basis that you know, from government. So we need to come you know, together you know, as one to promote support and ownership for this process to also uh, provide a work and manage database. Database is not just about data collection. It is also about data utilization. So we must be aware you know, of that. And we need all hands to be on deck not just to collect the data, to analyze the data, and to use the data. We must begin to think about the utilization of this data, even before we start you know, to collect. What are we collecting data for? What type of data, what types of data you know, are we collecting? So there's a new theory of change that all of us must get involved in to execute. And in this theory of change, everyone who is a participant, who is a stakeholder, must come together to see how we make a success of this. And uh, lastly, uh, one thing that struck me in the course of the presentation by the UN women uh, is the issue of money to map resources, to even map organizations that are involved in widows' activities themselves. Who is doing what? 
important to know we take that to stress. Thank, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, thank Madam um, Mrs. Ademokun, for your speech. Um, we're grateful and we thank you for the support. Um, and the fact that all women um, and widows initiatives should support to collaborate together to ensure the success of the database of the widows. Um, we will be taking the next uh, speaker and I would allow my co-moderator to introduce her. Thank you. Up next, we have Mrs. Bukola Adebayo. She's a journalist, a senior producer with the CNN Digital in Africa. And she will be speaking on how the media can start the advocacy for widows. You are up next, Ms. Bukola. Please unmute your mic and take the floor. You have five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm so happy to be in the midst of so many collaborators. Uh, everybody here I've been listening is just trying to look for ways to address this critical issue. But um, thank you, Madam O, for having me. I mean, you have been tremendous trying to shine light on this very important issue that affects both men, because we've been talking about women, it affects both men. Men also become widows. Uh, women become widows, men become, they also lose their, uh, their wives. So I, I want to speak specifically to how media, the role of media in kickstarting whatever initiative anybody is it ngos is it government is it um authorities in any aspect is it in terms of rights is it in terms of resources is it in terms of empowerment how the media can help shape and sort of anchor what everybody is doing or not doing in terms of the narrative of widowhood and i would there are some points i would take examples from how media has helped some form of campaigns and they've gone global, the Me Too campaign, it was the media. Women had been harassed everywhere all over the world. It was in the boardroom, it was in schools, but the media was able to take a particular step to amplify, like uh, Joka said, movies have been made about sexual harassment, stories have been written about the Me Too movement, it's going all over the world. How can we bring the story of widows to an international platform where even anybody can hold the government accountable? Why, what are you doing to stop harassment of widows? What are you doing for the welfare of widows? And one step I'll go to is engagement. I think any organization, NGO working in this area should partner with media, media ofs like the Nigerian Union of Journalists, you need to partner with the bloggers association you need to speak to the editors forum you approach these bodies let them know what you are doing because to be honest you need to start from the very top and if you have an editor that is talking that you've educated about these issues that editor will be more inclined to commission a writer to write about it will be that editor the film association, for instance, will be more interested in saying, oh, apart from just writing this story, can we do a documentary about the plight of widows in Nigeria? Can we do a documentary about what widows are going through in southern Nigeria? And before you know it, that is how you amplify whatever issue you are talking about. A database has been launched today on paper. How do you hold them accountable? You may not always have access to the minister, to the commissioner, or whoever is in charge of these policies. But you, the media you would have access to because they would take up, is it the act to protect women? Media will be able to follow up on who and how these promises are being pushed forward. It's not, it's, it's a, because I find that widowed issue is about, is a rights issue, is a women's rights issue. Is about inequality, which is the theme of today's um, International Widows Day, and for it to be amplified so that we are not just working in different areas. And like has been said today, we need to reach people in different strata. We have young widows, we have old widows, we have people in villages, we have people in cities. The story is sort of similar, and the dynamics are the same. 
but everybody is looking at TV, everybody's looking at radio, people are watching films, people are watching documentary in different languages. And resources may be a sort of challenge, but I think engaging the, I would say the gatekeepers in media is very, very important. And I like what the Amana Hope has done. They've been doing that with the women uh, WFM. And that has also sort of amplified a lot of Network. Network. I I am really really um happy for today, and my thanks go to the um the uh, first lady. Uh, First Lady, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Dr. Aisha Mohamed Buhari, and to the Honorable Minister for Women and Affairs, and the uh, Comfort Lancy, and uh, I can say all protocols observed. And uh, the need for what we are doing today, it's really overwhelming. I lost my husband uh, 29 years ago. I got married quite early, had my kids, and um, a lot of things happened, which is, was quite devastating. And uh, around the world, I know that, uh, from my own personal experiences, I know that developing countries have suffered, women have suffered so much when they lose their husband. They lost every hope. Everything that concerning them, their properties, they are taken away. Some of them, they take their children away from them. Thereby making them lose everything, everything. They lose their homes, they lose their properties, become hopeless and helpless. I was too young when it happened to me. And to me, I was like, am I going to survive this? I actually, I nearly took my life on three occasions. I attempted suicide. But today, I thank God for what he has done in my life. So the recent event and what is happening when I was called on by hope I was like wow 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 this is wonderful if this can be done if this can be done to widows to give them hope to for them to know that there are people who are looking out for them it will be wonderful and in this country or in the whole world the number of women are so much more, women are more than men so if we say we cannot put women or we in the planning or a national plan, I think that would be a disservice. Even the recent coronavirus or COVID-19 pandemic has just worsened the situation. It has made a lot, a lot of young widows, even the elderly ones, the old ones, their own is even worse. We cannot, we cannot overlook the, the fact that these things, what we are talking about today is happening everywhere and women are being relegated to the background. Widows are meant to be seen and not to be heard. They have needs. They cannot voice out their needs. They have nobody to fight for them. Even the women themselves, the women themselves fight the widows even. As if when your husband dies, you have, you have a problem yourself. It is a serious stigma. But when we consider the number of women or the number of widows in the whole world, even for the United Nations uh, uh, survey, I gather that, that there are over 200 and something million widows all over the world. So if we can do planning without including these women, and women that are widows, I can say they wear two caps. You wear the first cap as a mother, you wear the second cap as a man-woman. During the yesterdays or to the Sundays, the Father's Day, I told people that should call me and wish me happy Father's Day for having taken care of my children as a woman, their mother, and as a father, because it is not easy. So for a widow to be able to do that dual responsibility, taking care of the children as a mother, and at the same time as a father, taking care of everything that concerns the, 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 the children and the family, she should be included in the plan, in the national plan. I think she deserves to be included in the national plan. 
There is no woman that goes to the market and buy wid widowhood. So if you don't include widows in national plan, that's a disservice. That's a complete disservice. That means you are trying to take them away from what belongs to them. You are trying to make them take responsibility of what they did not do for themselves. Every woman out there is a potential widow. Somebody has said that earlier, and I smile when she said that, because I have it in my mind. Every woman out there is a potential widow. It's sorry to say that, but that's a fact. Because the day your husband dies, you become a widow. My, my, my mother-in-law used to say that you should guide your husband so well, because when the kite comes and picks him up, you become a widow. So don't see a widow as somebody who, who life has left behind or who life has, uh, has destroyed or something. It's a nature that is something God put, put on or put forward for us. And also when it happens, it happens. But we should learn to put, or the nation should learn to see these women as human beings and not just strip them off forever and allow them to just rust away and all that. A lot of women don't, don't the, the shock of losing their husband, they don't come out of it. We know ones that are in the psychiatric hospitals, some has lost the sense of living, some just believe that, oh, I'm just there, I am just there. So there's nothing I can do anymore. But there are potentials in us. For a woman to take care, to take a role of being a father and a mother and sustain all the hardship that comes from this, all the reproaches that come from families and all that, and still make it in life, why would she not be included in national planning? Women are resilient. If they are resilient, that means for national planning, you need people who are resilient. And for that reason, widows are supposed to be part of that, of that national planning. We cannot talk about all the ravaging effects of uh, Ebola, HIV, AIDS, Boko Haram, Fulani Hesnen. That is getting more widows into the number. The, the, the most recent one is this pandemic of COVID-19. And when we don't have plans for all these widows, we know that in the, in, the, in the years past, a lot of women are not allowed to work. Our husbands never allowed us to work, even with your education. So when they don't allow you to, or when the man dies, you don't have any access to bank accounts. You don't have any access to, to, uh, to pension. You don't have any access to anything. So how can that woman take care of herself and her children in terms of health care, in terms of providing their needs, shelter, their school fees, and all that? It is difficult. So we need the national planning. We need, we need the nation to add women to whatever they are doing so that they will be a sucker. They, they will have a full back onto what, what at least they, they can be hopeless and helpless. Thank you so, so much. So the inclusion of widows, the inclusion Thank of widows is cannot overemphasized. Thank you so much, Mrs. DK. We're very grateful for your um, contributions. Yes, he who wears the shoe knows where he pinches. And so if we're going to have a database for widows, we must include the widows because they alone can tell their stories. They alone can share their experiences. Thank you so much. We'll be going into a time of so question much. and answer. Thank you so much. And um, we already have a question here. You know, so we'll just go straight on to the question and answer session and then we'll uh, take uh, our questions. The first question will be um, taken by Ms. Okunwakwesi and it's um, by Ayolano, who is asking what the goal of this medium is and who is going to manage this database. I think that's the most important aspect of this question and how would this organization impact the appalling education system in Nigeria? So who will go, who will manage this database, this database of people and widows that we were, were collating? How is it going to be managed and to what end is it going to be used? Thank you. Okay. Uh, first of all, when it was difficult, when we started it, it was a manner of in partnership with WFF. So when we, when the number got started increasing, we now contacted the Ministry of Women and Men, and they endorsed it and said they want to turn it to a Nigerian Widows Database. Once it becomes like now a Nigerian Widows Database, it is no longer a mana hopes property. It becomes a Nigerian Widows Database. What I know and I believe that once we finish, today is launch. The idea of the launch is like a flag up. Like she has said, that all the 36 states of 
commissioners of women affairs should get involved let us collect this number the reality is that at the end of the day it becomes the ministry's pro, um, property so i mean, so what i'm in this i'm taking this uh, uh, you know medium now to ask everybody it is not almana hope it is not women radio it is federal ministry of women affairs we are just the conduit pipe right. to the federal ministry of women affairs we are just the conduit pipe that's initiated it and they bought into the idea so what it is a collective effort like i, I know some of the people are saying collaboration we need to come together using uh, the, 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 the you know the strategic information the country representative conformity gave us it was part of the things we put in the age what the person do the state let's have a demographic structure of data so that we can sign hand it to the ministry or, or, or you know that it belongs to so that they can use it i hope i answered is there another thing that thank you yes you did answer the question we have another question on online and it's um very uh, important because um the person morufat kushimo is asking how do we get access to the data collection? So I think that she's asking, how do widows join that data base? We can't. Sorry. Like you I need said, to unmute your yes, 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 I'm here. We started it as a palliative. We have we have the assets we've been trying. We have we have done cash transfer to a couple of widows looking into the debit database after verification. But now it is a bigger project. I believe strongly that at the end of this thing, we are going to meet the, a partnership with the Ministry of Women Affairs and go into the process of going out in action to meet it. Because one of the things we are like, the few data we have gotten was just using our social media and the radio adverts with WFM. They go to the link. But it became obvious that some people are not accessible to the link. Like some of the things we've done in the process before this, is that we got people in the villages to from the church they were writing it putting all the information and we sat down we have to engage people here to be keen into the into the into the database so that's what we are going to sit down when we finish this thing to holistically address you know how we are going to go in because it has now become a major big project and it's going to entail so many other people we have to go in and use the local way as well as the the you know the international, that's the media way to get this data. It, it, it's, it's going to be a, a problem. I, I mean, this is just a beginning. So we, it is okay. a project we are going to take into action with the WFM and okay. the collaboration with the ministry. Can we hear from Mrs. Ademo who has um, something, else something to chip in into that question? Mrs. Ademo please come in. Okay, thank you so much. I just want to quickly add that, you know, um, she started it well in terms of further engagement with the ministry, everybody working on those issues to sit down together. We already know that there are um, um, faith-based organizations, even NGOs, that are dealing with widows that have you no know, information. But we will have to expand that. And in expanding that, I want to appeal to everyone here, please, let's uh, share it with uh, widows. They should go to the local government if your spouse died at home without going to the hospital please go to the local government to register the death because just this morning i was talking to a widow who needed and i asked where is your husband's death certificate she told me he died at home just have gone you know to the um a local government to do that so we'll be working with local government, we'll be working you know, with the federal ministry, state, you know, and also organizations that deal with you know, uh, faith-based NGOs and all that. But the widows need to have their certificate for their spouse. Because sometimes we have seen in the course of this uh, job that people will come and tell their widows. But when you investigate further, you just find out that they have some economic challenges and they felt you could help. So they'll come to present themselves as widows. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank I have you a so question, much. please. Um, sorry, a question. before, 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 your, before question, your question, ma'am, can we hear yeah, from Hida, who um, is um, actively involved in um, database collection as to what next, the next steps are? Thank you, Hida. Thank you so much, and, and congratulations on an excellent forum. Congratulations on partnering with your government. This is a seminal moment for Nigeria, and I'm um, honored to be holding your hand and, and working with you through this. Um, 
all of the questions uh, regarding next steps are completely legitimate and I can share with you a little bit about what this looks like on the other side of what you're uh, going through right now. Um, when I take uh, part in uh, UN meetings, which I do almost daily, but certainly at the UN when it's open at least weekly. I speak with ambassadors, I speak with ministers, I speak with anyone who will listen. For the last five years, people have started paying attention. But before then, I think people just looked at me and said, are you, there's no problem, what, what are you talking about? The thing is, is that when you raise your voices, it's one thing. When you raise one voice alone, no one hears you. When you have four or five million voices being raised, you get a lot of attention. So when you register your names and you register your story and you register your age and you register whether or not you've been um, a victim of the three things that we talk about, discrimination, uh, disinheritance and violent traditional practices, when you register that information, it goes into a database that we use on the other side, in the chambers of US Congress, in the chambers of the UK aid and House of Lords, in the chambers of the United Nations. What does that do? When I say, Your Excellency, 12% or 15% or 50% as in Kenya of widows were disinherited, or 49% were uh, subject to violent traditional practices. This draws attention and people start paying attention. What does attention do? Well, the first thing that we do, we change laws. Your greatest asset is working with your government and your leaders to change laws. When you change laws and you begin to have cases and case law, you can also then start approaching your local leaders, traditional leaders, church ministers, who often are the problem, who are often the ones that are perpetrating these practices, and often the ones who are saying, no, widow, you don't need to collect that debt. No, you can just let go of all your property, give it to the family. We should not be doing that. The other thing that we need to do is once we know who we are and we memorialize those voices and that count, we can go to funders. We can go to the US government and say, these widows have been violated, abused, neglected. We need funds to build banks, to give them access to credit, to give them an opportunity to raise themselves and their children. And so these are the, the issues. Once we get through this period, it changes. So congratulations on this. We hope to work with you, and to the extent that you can reach us, partner with us, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, reach so that we can also work with you and hear your stories and take those stories to those who have the ability to make decisions and make change. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eva, um, for, that, for, for that contribution. Um, someone, what, someone has asked the question whether affirmative action would be better than a bill, and I think you've answered it in part that um, a lot, the more voices that we have, the more um, we would be heard, and that would eventually lead to the government taking notice of us and um, taking um, and then lead to a, a bill being passed. So, thank you so very much. Now, the next question we have is how do we verify the authenticity of the information during the registration, mostly from the rural areas? You know, how, how, how do we ensure that the information we're putting into this database it's actually is accurate. actually accurate? And not doctored. Yes. Could either talk on that and then we'll hear from Hope too. Thank you. Um, um, Hope, please. Mrs. Hope, you, you, please. Know, you need to unmute Hope, your mic. Oh, we can't hear you. Yes, okay, yes thank you. Can, we hear can, you. Hear you. can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, it, it was actually it was this question you asked, even when we were talking about palliative. I remember to him, every day we do it. Oh, how do you know that the effects are not being under? I said, first, with the palliative, what we did is, you know, we tried to ask, ask questions, say, you know, make research based on people around them, the few people who have been. But if, what I want us to do now is not, just like everybody said, 
it is now everybody's voice. I believe that when the ministry, the churches, get involved in getting this data. For example, I, I'm in Lagos. I cannot have a accurate information of people that are in Plateau or in a, 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 a what is it called? A, a brain state or whatever. But if, like the minister has said, he employed the 36 states of commissioners of women affairs. If they come, come 46, I mean, 36 states now take it over and employ the uh, traditional rulers, the churches, it, it, you know, I, the number, if I tell you there's a, there's a, there's a state, in Imo state, the number I got from their churches were over 800. Because the, the pastor in that ch state, the church, the, a widow here in Lagos, took it to go to her state, and the church were registering it, putting it, and, you know, mailing it to us, and we were paying it. You can see, it is, I believe we are not going to get 100%, but I believe if all of us put our heads together, we will get 99% accurate of this data. It is not something I can sit here and do, you know. It is something the commissioners, the local government, the church base, in our various communities, we get involved and we can get it 99.9%. Um, Hida, would you have something to add to this discourse, to this question? Do you have something to say in answer to this question? I always have a lot to say. <laughs> no problem. Um, so, so you know, just going back to how we populate the database correctly. The first thing is eliminate fear. Encourage your widows. We need all of our partners, NGOs across Nigeria, to um, put aside their differences and organize their networks. Because the more that we are read and the more that we are heard the more that we will um, uh, retrieve from the truths that we reveal in this. Um, the second thing is, like I said on the, in my comments, ask the difficult questions and make sure that this is comprehensive. For example, I ask my widows in, in the surveys that we run around the world, at what age were you widowed? Would you believe that more than 50% of my widows were widowed under the age of 39? Most widows are young which means they are responsible for young children. This is not an aging problem. This is the young women's problem, and it needs to be addressed as such. It changes the perspective. Kenya asked a question in their survey last year. They said, how many have you had, had endured uh, harmful traditional practices? Almost 50%. And I spoke with Hope about this, and she believes that people were too afraid to actually say the number. She thinks it's much higher, and I agree with her. And so we need to ask the uncomfortable questions in order to get truths so that we can take that information to things like uh, NGOs, like the Global Fund for Children um, or Save the Children and say, we need to focus on saving the children of widows. Why? I, sh you know, I have a graphic that I can display if you will indulge me with time to, to share with you. But the, um, the idea is that widows, children, are the first thing that widows do when they are widowed is they seek to marry their daughters off as children to protect them. It's a wonderful thing to try to protect your daughter, but you're marrying her off as a, as a child. You take your children out of school because you don't have the school fees. Your sons become extremist recruits. In fact, 33% of extremist recruits come from widowed households. And so these are vulnerabilities that haven't even been thought of as we discuss the issue of widowhood with our governments and we need to be cognizant of it. I would also say one thing on marriage because you mentioned marriage. It is very important that we register marriage. Every single marriage must be registered because when it's an unregistered marriage, the first thing that happens is you cannot collect that, that, that certificate. You don't have a marriage certificate. You are persona non grata. So I urge, I beg your country to register every marriage and to register. And, and mothers, don't let your daughter marry. If that man doesn't want to register that marriage, there's another man out there that will. And tell your sons, you must register that marriage. Tell, tell your husbands, you must register this marriage. And we always get this response, no, I'm not going to register the marriage, then you'll try to kill me. Are you giving me a reason to kill you? Like, what is that? <laughs> so, so 
it, we have to now start thinking about protecting before we get to the vulnerability stage, which I think Esther mentioned, as well as a few of my other colleagues. Um, in these ways, we'll start repairing from the beginning, or, or sorry, uh, I guess addressing the issue prophylactically, but also repairing as soon as that death uh, occurs. And also don't forget, there's more than one kind of widow. It doesn't necessarily mean that your husband is deceased. Your husband could be permanently missing. Maybe he's missing due to non-state actions such as Boko Haram or ISIS. Um, maybe we should also include those forced marriage widows, the returnees from Boko Haram. It's very difficult. The cross that they have to bear is unbearable. And so we, we need to ask those difficult questions and make sure that we're entering those IDP camps, that we're talking to those priests, and we're getting all of the uh, so participants that we pass. Thank you so much, Heather. Thank it's you, almost Heather. 12 now, and we need to sign out so that Zoom doesn't log us off. It's been a very insightful and very remarkable journey. It's been a very remarkable experience. Thank you so much for, to everyone who has come out Please, Thank you, Excellency. Excuse me, I have a quick one for you there, please. Earlier on, Madam Op said um, during a radio t um, program, she has a, she can recover property for widows. Is this limited to those in Lagos alone? A widow asked me here, or people outside Lagos can also benefit from that. No, I think um, yeah, it's not limited to Lagos, but you can take um, the conversation outside please, this. Please, because let, we, let me we answer that question. Sorry, give me one yeah. minute to answer that question. Give me that Thank one you. second to answer that question. One second. I, I'm going to answer this question. WFM took it on their self because they are unapologetically women to give us the space for two years without collecting money. Radio is, uh, you know, I, like, I put it in one of my Twitter discussion, Amana Ho that this is a social change. I, I believe that it is mandatory personal, that's what I believe, for state radio stations to put programs like that on radio because that is part of state issues, social change. So it's, it doesn't have to stop with Lagos, but the, 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 the WFM cannot cover that side, but it is the duty of every other radio station as well as other organizations to use that as, a, as their C Social, corporate social responsibility and start putting this program. Education, information, and entertainment is part of the work of media. And bringing this app program into the beam lights is education and information. So uh, it's blessed. Uh, anybody that is ready, any state that is ready, any corporate body that is ready, we are ready to partner with other widows and foundation out of the state and build up this thing with WFM. They will give us the plan, I mean, what is it called? The prototype of what we have been doing for the past one year. And we take it, I'm even sure that WFM is ready to come to any, any states and start if they can give her the power and the, uh, the authority and all the whatever to do it. Very Thank good. you. Okay. Thank you, Madam Mo. Yes. Thank you. We, we've run out of time and uh, we can't take any more questions, but the discussions continue afterwards. Um, our manner hope is on Facebook every Saturday with the panelists and she can take your questions. And of course, we, 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 there will be a communique as to um, the fallout of this um, meeting and this webinar, and we will take it on from there, especially with our media collaborators and supporters. And we're ensure that we've just started stick with us um be 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 supportive and you know um we will go um a long length in in this journey it's, it's a journey of a thousand steps we've taken the first step today but i'm sure that um we would you know have a very long um, collaborative journey with everyone that has participated so far. And we look forward to expecting more people join us, more organizations join us, and more um, involvement and participation from the government agencies. Um, to close up, we will be taking a vote of thanks from Christina Udeme. Please, Christina, um, unmute your mic and just give us a vote of thanks. One minute. Thank you very much. Very important. It, okay. Hello. We can hear you, Mark. Please go on. Okay. Good morning from New York. And uh, it's been an interesting meeting today. On behalf of the organizers, I want to thank um, Her Excellency, Dr. Aisha Buari, who sent in a representative. I also want to thank, especially, the Honorable Minister for Women Affairs, who have always shown interest, keen interest in the affair of widows. 
Um, the country rep of UN, uh, I also want to extend uh, thanks to, to her and every other person who has participated. Time will not allow me to read out um, every name that I have here, but it's been an interesting webinar and is a beginning of an, of an action. You know, it's a beginning of a lineup of activities to change the narrative in the ways uh, that we handle what concerns widows and in the ways also that widows handle what concerns them. And so we all have to be out there, not just our manner hope, you know, my sister Hope, I, I want to thank you especially for this. It's not, it's not just our manner hope. Every widow, every person needs to be involved in this to push this bill and get no. widows so that all of us will move in one direction and get these issues on the front burner of public discourse. So I want to thank you for being here. Hello, you know, having to wake up at 4 a.m. to be able to make this. this uh, thank you for being there so thank you to everyone our man i hope we are proud of you and we love you thank you so much and thank you for being on this platform bye thank you so much everyone thank you again to the um our first lady um dr mrs um, aisha muhammad buhari we want to thank comfort lamte the un woman representative um Hida ibrahim for your um, um contributions we want to thank yetunde ajani and um Bukola, um We'd like to thank, we'd also like to thank Mrs. Shonaya. We'd like to thank Mrs. Mrs. Raji, Ajani Raji. We'd like to thank Mrs. Bukola. We'd like to thank everyone. Thank you so much for making our time to make it a date with us today. Together, we'll thank make you. the plight of widows better. We know that this bill will come to fruition and our plight will be better. Thank you so much. Signing out from here, yeah, your moderators, Tara Ishida and Unye Okocha. Thank have you. a lovely day. Have a lovely day. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Have a nice day. <laughs>